In this video, we're going to look at the properties of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Let's first take a look at their appearance. When you look at a metal, you've probably noticed that they reflect light a lot, so they're very shiny. This means that they have a metallic luster to them. Now if we look at some of the non-metals, like carbon here, it has a very dull color to it, so there isn't much light shining off it. Or if we look at sulfur, you can see it's very colorful. And then there are a bunch of gases, like oxygen, that are completely colorless. To summarize, metals are very shiny and have a metallic luster to them, whereas non-metals are dull, colorless, or colorful. Now let's take a look at their conductivity. Here we have a circuit set up where if you connect the wires, the light bulb will turn on. So we're going to take a metal and place it in between it, and as you can see, it still turns on with the metal because electricity can flow through the metal. So here's some copper, testing it again, and the light bulb turns on. Now if we take some non-metals like sulfur, the light won't turn on because electricity can't flow through it. Same thing here with carbon. In addition to being good conductors of electricity, Metals are also good conductors of heat, so that's why pans are made out of metal. Here's a thermal video showing how as you heat the bottom of the pan, it heats up pretty quickly, but it also goes around and heats up the sides of it since heat can easily flow through the metal. So metals are good conductors of both heat and electricity, whereas non-metals are poor conductors of heat and electricity. Now let's take a look at what happens when you hit them with a hammer. Now when you take a piece of metal and hit it with a hammer, you notice it doesn't break. In fact, if you keep hitting it, it just gets flatter and flatter. That means it's malleable. So uh, metals are malleable, which means they flatten when they're hit. In addition to being malleable, they're also very ductile, which means they can be drawn into thin wires, which is very useful for everyday electronics. Now if we try to hit a non-metal with a hammer, as you can see, it easily breaks into many pieces. This means that they're very brittle. So non-metals are brittle because they break when they're hit. So metals are very malleable, which means they can be flattened when hammered, or they can also be drawn into a wire, which means they're ductile, whereas non-metals are very brittle. They break when hit with a hammer. Now let's take a look at their melting point. On the left we have a metal, aluminum, and on the right we have sulfur, and we're going to heat them up with a blowtorch here and see if they melt. So as you can see already, the sulfur on the right is turning into a liquid, whereas on the left the metal has not even begun to melt. So metals have very high melting points, whereas non-metals have low melting points. Finally, let's look at which state of matter they're found in at room temperature. If we take a look at titanium, silver, copper, gold, or almost any other metal on the periodic table, they're all solids. There are two really neat exceptions though. Both gallium and mercury are liquids at room temperature. So liquid mercury is commonly found in thermometers and it's very useful for its expansion and contraction properties but it's very toxic, so you'd never want to actually hold it or touch it. On the other hand, gallium is also liquid at room temperature. This one is not toxic, and you can actually hold it and melt it in your hand, so it's kind of a neat metal to explore or play around with. Now, if we take a look at the non-metals, many of them are actually gases at room temperature, such as hydrogen, helium, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, chlorine, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. One of them is a liquid, bromine, and then the remaining are solids. So for metals, they're almost all solids at room temperature, whereas it's a little different for non-metals, but oftentimes they're gases at room temperature. The last category of elements we haven't talked about yet are the metalloids. Metalloids are a group of elements with properties that bridge the characteristics of metals and non-metals. They are typically found along the staircase on the periodic table, displaying features such as semiconductivity, varying electrical conductivity, and sometimes metal-like luster. Metalloids exhibit versatility in their applications, from serving as crucial semiconductors in electronic devices like computers and smartphones to enhancing the properties of alloys and glass making. Additionally, metalloids play roles in catalysts, renewable energy through photovoltaic cells, and even traditional medicine. 
Despite their diverse application, metalloids are distinguished by their unique ability to adapt and contribute across a wide range of industries, making them indispensable elements in modern technology and innovation. In conclusion, our exploration of the properties of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids reveals the incredible diversity and utility of elements in our world. From conducting electricity to forming strong alloys and serving as essential semiconductors, these elements shape technology, industry, and our daily lives. As we continue to delve into the mysteries of the periodic table, let's embrace the endless opportunities for discovery and innovation it offers. Stay curious and keep exploring the fascinating world of science.